What's up traders, welcome back. So we've been seeing a lot more momentum lately, specifically multi-day runners. But how do you know which stocks have a better chance of having that second or third big green day? That's what we're gonna dive into today. The commonalities between momentum stocks that have that continuation. And when I was looking back at the recent tickers, man, there's a lot more than I thought there were. So I'll review 10 that held their highs really well, and then five that kind of faded a bit more. So you can see the difference between the two. I'll give you my thoughts on what these good multi-day runners all have in common and what the ones that didn't hold have in common as well. I'll give you a quick little lesson already. You want to wait for a midday consolidation before you start accumulating around support. That's been a big recurring theme. So let's dive right into it. Um, so CDIO is probably one of the most recent multi-day uh, tickers that held their highs well. To help you guys understand what we're looking at, let me just break down a few of these indicators. We got the 180 S ma right here the light blue is the 9 ema so the exponential moving average this is a 15 ema i use these two for day trading a little bit more aggressively this is the volume down here this is the rsi i really don't use the rsi pretty much ever but i do have it on for a few investments i i like to look at kind of just leave it on there but again for day trading you'll see i don't have rsi and then I have the MACD, which is also kind of interesting. I've noticed I've been using it less and less as well. I decided to leave it on here. Um, that's a good little reference point. So maybe over the years, I'll find times where it's better to use it and maybe times where I don't find it as useful. With CDIO right away, again, midday consolidation, had a bit of a triple bottom, double bottom, whatever you'd wanna call that and it pulled back from the highs around 25, 27, maybe max like 28%. Um, but it really consolidated only down like 15%, uh, percent, and then it had strength into the afternoon. That's a really important part. And I've noticed these multi-day runners have really bad opens, so they're not easy to trade at the market open, but once they get back above the 180 SMA or back above VWAP, they tend to start having these really aggressive trends to the front side. And actually, I forgot to mention, this is a five minute chart if you weren't aware. So today it's having a bit of a blow off top, but again, look at this, it only pulled back like 29, 30%, and now it's consolidating near the highs. So a lot of things we see on this ticker, we're actually gonna see for the other nine tickers that I'll quickly run through, but first, holding the highs about 25 to 30%, not really pulling back much more than that. Strength into the afternoon. Typically we'll see a gap up pre-market. So here we saw a gap up. Sometimes we'll see a gap up the second day pre-market. The market open is not a great time to trade it. And midday consolidation is really where you wanna start accumulating. Overall, you're, you're gonna be noticing a lot of these stare patterns, um, probably even easier to see on the 15 minute where there's these big first stairs and then you have these higher lows coming in really clean, uh, almost textbook-like price action. LLAP is another ticker that had a gap up, but it didn't actually have a great continuation. And you'll see that we had that gap up, but pre-market, we actually started selling off quite aggressively. And then at the end of the trading day, we also started selling off quite aggressively. And that was a little bit of foreshadowing of what is to come. This ticker never had that second gap. It never really closed near the highs. So this ticker was a little bit more of a red flag. And look at that, it pulled back, oh, I would say more than 30% easily. So you wanna have those tickers really holding pre-market highs, not much more pulling back than 25%. ARBE is a ticker with a huge initial green day, pulled back, popped back higher, and then flushed. Let's look at the five minutes and see how that looks like. It did sell off pre-market, but it didn't sell off that much, only about 20%, and it was consolidating. But again, the problem was it wasn't consolidating near the highs. It kind of slowly ended up fading and never had that continuation. Really quickly, just coming back to CDIO, you'll notice how we started consolidating more near the high of this range as opposed to ARBE, which kind of popped up and started consolidating down here. LUNR, which had one, two, really just one right here, two, three, four, four days of big continuation. Let's go on this one and look at this a little bit more. You'll see again that first stair. We start holding our highs really well here. Over multi days, it's holding its highs really well. I mean, all these, all this consolidation is near the high of the first big gap day. And then we just absolutely rip. This one actually was a bit more tradable 
on the big green day that ripped up higher. But you'll notice again, very weak close. So this would be for me, a warning sign that we're not gonna get good continuation. It tried to pop up higher here, but again, a lot of weakness. So you gotta be careful when you start seeing a ticker close into weakness, not a good sign. DCFC had a few days of continuation here. And this was a sector play as well, electrical equipment with um, EVs. Actually, the 15 minute will probably be easier to look at on this one. This wasn't a classic small cap, I would say, but at the same time, we're gapping pre-market. Mornings are a little bit tricky to trade another gap. This was a really nice one because we're closing near the highs. That's always a good indicator of a gap. And I would say probably the most consistent commonality between all these tickers is closing near the highs is a really good indicator. Uh, again, pulls back here, but closed near the highs and has another gap day pre-market. You always got to be careful on these, especially if a gap pre-market as well, just like here, here gap pre-markets. Buzzfeed had a huge run and this was also a sector play because they had uh, AI news that they're using AI in their uh, website, but I kind of felt like that was pretty weak since it's just a news site, but hey, sure, we're all kind of using AI at this point in our businesses, but sure, we'll give it to them. What I do like about this one is the fact that it ripped. It is more of a large cap than our classic small cap or at least a mid cap, and then it consolidated near highs, closed near highs. That's a really good sign. It did pull back here, but it ripped up again, um, but at this point it was fading, so very weak and it didn't really recover from that. It's been selling off ever since. SERA, nice multi-day move here and it's still holding its highs. Let's actually go to this one and zoom. You'll see again, we have those beautiful stair stepper patterns. So this one popped up here uh, 70 plus percent. Now consolidated a little bit light here and it popped up into the close. So it had a lot of strength there. And again, it consolidated near the close of this area near that initial high. And that's really good to see that especially right here, we have that general big support range where originally this was resistance, became support. We broke a little bit below it, but very, very low volume. We popped back above it, had a beautiful pullback and continuation. So you always wanna be very mindful of what the overall trend of these tickers are. Uh, again, closing near the highs, very good to see that. GNS is a little bit of an older ticker, but it had a really good run, initial run. You'll see a lot of similarities. Uh, the initial pop here was on lower volume, but it had that first stair look as well, closing near the highs. And then we had that pre-market gap up, pullback continuation. Now at this point, I was a little bit nervous about GNS because it did not hold the high so well. You could have been holding this one with a fairly tight stop around 450 or so, but I think this really random pop pre-market was a little bit unexpected. At the same time, there is a bit of a first stare here. At this point, it gets really, really choppy GNS and starts fading lower and lower at this point. So you could have just cut your losses MSGM, look at that, they came out with an offering not too long ago. But hey, two big green days back to back. Great to see that. Initial gap up day, 250%, really insane. And then right around 1020, this ticker just absolutely explodes. Starts forming that first stare, never really pulls back that much. It's a really good indicator of continuation. But at this point, it's super extended. I mean, we went from, I think it was 250, 50 or so all the way up to $80. This ticker was absolutely insane. We have these stair steppers. We're holding the highs really, really well. And that's where we're consolidating. We're not pulling back and then consolidating. We are holding those highs and then ripping later on. CVNA was a pretty uh, popular meme stock that a lot of people were trading. I also did a few trades off of it. More of a large cap and a growth stock that's just very depreciated at this point. But at the same time, we start seeing those trends spike higher, consolidation near the highs, spike higher, consolidation near the highs. We do have a larger pullback here, but it's only about 20%. And then we start ripping higher. At one point, once you start seeing that exponential move, it gets a little bit more tricky. Here, it tries to pop higher again. I feel like once it has a big exponential move, the opens are very tricky to trade. And here it gets weak again, late day into the close, weakness into the close, that's never a good sign. And then it pretty much fades off. Now we're gonna be looking at a few tickers that never really held their highs at all, like MLEC. And you'll notice right away the differences in these tickers. So for example, MLEC gapped up, but did not hold anything pre-market, starts getting 
giving back a lot of its profits, has a, this last attempt here to break higher, but it doesn't even get to this former shoulder at $12, which is pretty sad. GENE, -E, also a bit of a one day wonder, popped up here and you'll see on the five minute, it had that extended hours move. I think this was an offering and got totally crushed, but whenever you see weakness before the open, it's usually not a good sign. Yeah, so they had an offering here. So if they didn't have an offering, who knows, maybe this one could have had a really good continuation. And this is why I've been thinking, be careful accumulating pre-market already. Wait for that midday accumulation because it seems like a lot of these tickers that didn't hold will actually fail before the market opens. BWV popped up, one day wonder, sold off. Look at this, weakness into the open, big, big, big red flag. It gets a little bit crazy here on this run up and it's actually only a 30% run up. So it's not even that exciting. I typically avoid trading tickers until they're up over 40%. So BWV was always on that fence where it wasn't really a ticker that I wanted to trade at all. CING, this one technically had multi-day, but there was really only one big green day of volume worth trading. And you can see it's already having that weakness before the open. It did try its last little hoorah here, but it had a lot of resistance around 187 and just got crushed, wasn't able to break above this trend line either. And then once it's below this general support zone, it's pretty much game over. The last ticker, AUVI, had also a one big green day pop that sold off. You'll see this ticker popped up around 50%, had a little bit of weakness since the open, but wasn't really ever able to maintain itself. And it did not close with any sort of strength. It was rather selling off here. You would have wanted to see this ticker really start holding the highs and maybe even trending up into the afternoon. That's always a big sign. So when there's weakness into the open and weakness into the close, it's always a big red flag I found. I'll definitely be keeping a lookout for these tickers and you know where to find me in the Trade Journal Discord. When I see something worth trading, that's always the first place I'll share. I'll link it here at the top of the video. See you guys next time. Like always, stay safe and make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao.